Hey there, this is Veena from Patty Cake, the channel that's about baking and much, much more. A warm welcome to my channel. Today, let's make some crisp and delicious chicken and vegetable cutlets. I don't know why, but for some strange reason, these cutlets or patties to which white sauce and potatoes are added as binding agents are called Russian chicken cutlets in India and Pakistan. Actually, in Russia, their cutlets are made with ground chicken or beef, with egg, bread soaked in milk and a generous amount of butter added to the mix to keep the cutlets moist and tender. But no matter if the cutlets we are making are not exactly like those made in Russia, our version too is absolutely tasty. So without any further delay, let's start making some chicken and vegetable cutlets right now at Pat a Cake. It's best to use chicken breast or boneless chicken for these cutlets. We'll start by heating 2 tablespoons of oil on medium heat. Let's saute 1 tablespoon of crushed garlic and 1 tablespoon of crushed ginger in it for a few seconds. Here's 500 grams of chicken breast that I've cut into medium size pieces. Let's saute the chicken for a minute or two till it turns white and opaque. I'll now add half a cup of chopped onion and cook this for a minute or so till it softens. And then add in half a cup of finely chopped green beans. Let's stir everything. Add in 1 and 3 quarter cups of water and 1 teaspoon of salt and then cover the vessel and let the chicken mix cook for around 7 to 8 minutes. Now let's add in half a cup of green peas and half a cup of grated carrot and then stir the mix. Cover the vessel and let everything cook for 5 more minutes. That done, we'll turn off the heat and transfer the chicken and vegetables mixture to a colander. And let the stock drain away in the vessel below. The chicken has cooked completely. Let's remove the chicken pieces to a bowl. I've separated the chicken and squeezed out all the stock from the drained vegetables because we don't want our cutlet mix to be too wet. If you want the chicken strands to be thick, like this, then you should shred the cooked chicken pieces by hand. But if you want to shred the chicken finely, you could do this in seconds in a mixer grinder using the pulse mode. Don't run the grinder continuously or the chicken will be ground to a pulp. Here's the first batch of shredded chicken. I'll now shred the remaining chicken pieces. Here's all the chicken we shredded. It's now time to make some panada or thick white sauce, which will be one of the two binding agents in our cutlet mix and will also keep the cutlets from being too dry. Here's how we'll make it. Let's melt four tablespoons or a quarter cup of salted butter on medium heat. And then, Add in 6 tablespoons of maida or all-purpose flour. Let's sauté the maida in the butter for around 2 minutes till it gets properly cooked. After that, we'll add in 3 quarters of a cup of milk. And stir everything properly so the mixture is free from lumps. And then we'll add in the chicken plus vegetable stock. That's around half a cup. 
If you have a larger or smaller quantity of stock than what I have, then you'll have to either decrease or increase the quantity of milk accordingly. Let's cook the panada on medium heat for around 3 to 4 minutes till it's very thick. Like this. And then take it off the heat. It will thicken even further on cooling. To the shredded chicken, let's add the drained vegetables. Our second binding agent, two small potatoes that weighed 200 grams and which I have boiled and mashed. Half a cup of chopped coriander. A quarter cup of chopped mint. 10 finely chopped green chilies. One and a half teaspoons of ground pepper. One teaspoon garam masala. Half a teaspoon of turmeric powder and the panada. I'm going to retain about 3 tablespoons of the panada for now. Just in case, adding all of it makes our cutlet mix too sticky. I'll also add one crumbled soup cube. This is optional. Let's mix everything well. The cutlet mix should be slightly sticky, not too sticky. And it certainly shouldn't be dry. If it's dry, the cutlets too will be dry. We want them to be moist inside. I think I can go ahead and add the rest of the panada to the mix. Next, we'll add one and a half tablespoons of lime juice. Let's mix everything again. And then taste the mixture to see if we need to adjust any of the seasonings. The mix is very tasty. It just needs around half a teaspoon of salt. If you don't add the soup cube, you might need to add a little more salt. Now you'll have to wet your palms with water or grease them with oil and divide the cutlet mixture into balls. I'm going to make burger-sized cutlets, so I've divided the mixture into 16 balls. Next, let's make arrangements for coating the cutlets. We'll need to roll them in dry flour or maida, then dip them in a maida slurry, and finally roll them in breadcrumbs, semolina or a mixture of both. I'm using a mix of semolina and breadcrumbs because I don't have enough breadcrumbs to coat all the cutlets. For making our kind of Russian cutlets, Often, crushed fine vermicelli is also used for the final outer coating. Let's prepare the maida slurry. This is around half a cup of maida. Let's add a pinch of salt to it and enough water to make a medium thick slurry. The slurry should easily coat the back of a spoon. Now let's start coating the cutlets. Let's coat the next one. Similarly, I'll continue coating the rest of the cutlets. Now let's shallow fry our cutlets on medium heat till they are golden brown on each side. Time to flip these. This batch is done. I'll remove the cutlets to a plate lined with an absorbent paper towel. Let's fry the rest of the cutlets. I'm now done with the frying. Our crisp on the outside and soft and moist inside cutlets can be enjoyed with any sauce or chutney of your choice. I've broken one open, so you can check 
how the cutlets are inside. Like I told you, deliciously moist inside. Thanks to the panada or thick white sauce we've added. You could enjoy these cutlets with your meals or as a tasty snack. So do make them for your family and loved ones. You'll be so glad you did. I look forward to feedback from you. And till we meet again, happy cooking!